Hi everyone, welcome to Dentus and we are continuing with our lectures on periodontal ligament and today we are going to discuss the cells of periodontal ligament in detail which can be a short note for you. So let's start before starting quickly subscribe to Dentus and if you have not done that till now also give a like to this video as I keep making such interesting videos for you. So we have already covered periodontium and periodontal ligament in the first video and now we are going to cover cells and in the next video we are going to cover fibers and principal fibers of PDL. So don't forget to watch that video as well. So cells of the PDL, they are five types. First one is synthetic cells which form something so then the resorptive cells which destroy something progenitor cells which give birth to something and rest of malaise which are resting which are not forming anything which are not active cells and defense cells of pdl so let's see these subtypes of these cells synthetic cells the cells which form fibers are called fibroblasts cells forming bone are called osteoblasts cells which form cementum are called cementoblasts blast means the something someone which forms then resorptive cells which destroy these things now fibers are destroyed by the fibroblast Blast itself that is fibroblast forms fibers as well as destroys them whereas bone and cementum are destroyed by different cells so let's see so the resorptive cells of collagen fibers are fibroblast only but resorptive cells of bone are osteoclast class means which destroys something and the resorptive cells of cementum are cementoclast now defense cells in pdl can be mast cells macrophages and eosinophils so those are the five cell types now let's discuss each cell type in detail first the synthetic cells now all the synthetic cells they have some common general criteria that is all of them are synthetic cells they produce protein so they have a lot of organelles so they have rna transcription and ribosomes in the nucleolus transportation of these ribosomes to cytoplasm enough rough endoplasmic reticulum and golgi apparatus increased for translation and transportation of protein so all the qualities of an active cell so how these synthetic cells appear on stained sections so increased rna and ribosomes will give an appearance of open faced or vesicular nucleus that means they will have prominent nucleoli as you can see here where ribosomes have formed and the nucleus will stain dark that is it has increased hematoxyphilia increased staining for the hematoxylin blue color golgi apparatus will remain as clear unstained areas and increased mitochondria can be seen to meet the energy needs of the cell cell has to work so much so it needs a lot of mitochondria now the how do we know which synthetic cell is which one so these synthetic cells when they are lying in the connective tissue of the pdl they are called fibroblasts when they are present on the bone surface that is periodontal surface of the bone then they are called osteoblasts and when they are found at the cementum they are called cementoblasts now there are some points which are unique to each one of these synthetic cells so let's talk about these cells in further about these cells so fibroblasts they are predominant cells of the pdl remember that they are the most predominant cells of the pdl they are fusiform shape that is they are wider in the center and narrower at the edges they can be stellate shape so they par are parallel to the collagen fibers they form the collagen fibers and they are parallel to these fibers and parallel to the tooth long axis so electron microscopy revealed that they can have cilia cilia that means they are motile there are actin filaments inside these cells because of which which when contract they can change the shape and can migrate so their mo movement motility is due to presence of actin filaments so they these cells can develop cell to cell contacts through their processes as you can see here these uh, processes can contact each other and they can also contact the extracellular matrix so when these co processes contract the actin filaments inside them will contract and the cells will show motion so let's see how that happens inside the periodontal ligament so this is the fibroblast cell it has cytoplasmic processes as you can see here so these cells they wrap their processes around the collagen fibers collagen fibers ke around apni processes dal dete hain so when they get the signal from the matrix from some proteins to contract so actin inside them will contract and because of this contraction there will be motility and they will pull the pull these collagen fibers towards themselves they have wrapped around these collagen fibers and they will pull these fibers because of which a force is generated because of which there will be movement of the tooth and that is how these pdl fibroblasts helps in the eruption of the tooth and that is the theory of tooth eruption based on the periodontal ligament traction theory for the details you can watch the theory theories on tooth eruption video so we have seen that how these pdl fibroblasts have the contractile properties have motility now these fibroblasts have so many functions that is not only collagen formation elastin formation ground substance they also form enzymes which degrade the collagen periodontal ligament remodeling they also maintain the width of the periodontal ligament so those are the functions of these fibroblast cells now these fibroblasts of periodontal ligament are little different from the gingival fibroblasts how they are origin is ectomesenchymal whereas gingival are coming from mesodermal 
proliferative capacity of these pdl fibroblasts is high so they express high alkaline phosphatase and cyclic amp whereas it is less for gingival and these pdl fibroblasts have actin microfilaments and special protein which is called fibronectin glycoprotein with the help of these two it makes contractile apparatus it can contract it can generate forces for the tooth eruption so it has eruptive capacity whereas gingival fibroblasts do not have eruptive capacity now talking about the osteoblasts they are cuboidal shaped cells as you can see here they have nucleus which is prominent round nucleus located at the basal end of the cell abundant organelles because again it is synthetic cells they have desmosomes junctions between adjacent cells and tight junctions and their function is the formation of bone bone remodeling mineralization of osteoid collagenous and non collagenous protein formation proteoglycans enzymes and growth factors so they form so many things similarly cementoblasts are also cuboidal shaped cells they have abundant processes but they have less rough endoplasmic reticulum compared to the fibroblasts and their function is formation of cementum and attach the tooth to the bone via pdl now coming to the resorptive cells now for fibers fibroblasts are the resorptive cells but bone and cementum they are different so osteoclasts and cementoclasts let's discuss these cells osteoclasts they are derived from hematopoietic stem cells from the bo bone marrow derived coming from the blood so cementoclasts their origin is unknown but they are thought to be same as osteoclasts now on the light microscopy these osteoclasts they have they appear large multinucleated cells as you can see here large cells with multinucleated appearance or they can be small mononuclear cells small cells with single nucleus and where they rest on the bone where they degrade the bone that is called horseship lacuna this concavity this bay so for cementoclasts and osteoclasts let's see how it appears on the pdl surface so this is the osteoclast it is lying on the bone surface and this is the hauschitz lacuna or the concavity where the cell is lying and causing resorption so cementoglass will also show show the same thing that is they can be multinucleated or mononuclear and they show hauschitz lacuna over the cementum as you can see here now on under the electron microscopy these cells will show numerous mitochondria and lysosomes because they have enzymes inside it which helps in the degradation abundant golgi free ribosomes are there but little rough endoplasmic reticulum that means they are not synthesizing protein but they are degrading so cementoclasts also are similar to osteoclasts under the electron microscope and what is the function osteoclasts helps in bone resorption cementoclasts helps in cementum resorption now we coming to the third cells progenitor cells so they have the capacity to divide they replace the dying cells their highest concentration is adjacent to the blood vessels they like close to blood vessels so their cytological features are similar to stem cells how they are small size cells close phase nucleus and little cytoplasm so where these cells get migrated to the repair site with the help of fibrin and fibronectin for example this is the repair site so these progenitor cells will come there with the help of proteins and will form new cells will replace the dying cells now next is epithelial cell rests of malazae resting cells what are they they are the remnants of hertwig's epithelial root sheath or sheath which helps in the formation of root so its remnants may remain throughout the periodontal ligament but they are most abundant in the furcation areas and they lie close to cementum than to bone they are about 25 micrometer to the cementum they may be present as network of cells strands of cells they may be islands of cells or tubule like structures so they can give so many appearances when cross section is cut they can give cluster like arrangement group like arrangement when the tangential section is cut they can form a network of interconnecting strands parallel to the tooth surface so how they are differentiated from the fibroblast cells these cells are closely packed as you can see they are joined together they are cuboidal cells they have prominent nuclei deep staining very very important point about these cells they have dark staining nucleus scanty cytoplasm mitochondria are there but less of golgi apparatus and rough endoplasmic reticulum that means they are not synthetic cells they are not synthesizing proteins they have desmosomal junctions between the cells and through hemidesmosomes they are attached to the basal lamina around them so they may have hemidesmosomes as well now these cells are more numerous in children but they become less numerous in older also they are different according to the site that is in the second decade they become they are more located in the apical region but with time later in the age they become cervically located in the gingiva above the alveolar crest now what is the significance of these cells they are resting cells but sometimes these cells can proliferate and proliferate to form large masses to form their cysts and tumors and sometimes they can calcify calcium can get deposited and they can form calcified masses within the pdl which are called cementicles so cystic tumors and cementicles now the last cells defense cells which can be of three types let's talk about the origin location right microscopy and 
and function of each one of these first is mast cell as you can see here it is coming from hematopoietic stem cells location is thus associated with the blood vessels in light microscopy it appears as round or oval cell 12 to 15 microns diameter it has many granules inside it which you can see so these are 0.5 to 1 micron diameter granules vesicles and these granules contain substances like heparin and histamine and these cells are stained by metachromatic dyes like toluidine blue, blue azure dyes so dyes get over these cells and give the change in color so those are the metachromatic dyes what is the function of these cells they will release histamine from their granules and which will cause the proliferation of the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and mesenchymal cells second is macrophage as the name says phage it is going to eat something so it is also coming from hematopoietic stem cell it is adjacent to blood vessels its nucleus is horseshoe shaped or kidney shaped and sometimes there may be granular debris in its cytoplasm that means it has engulfed something so that is the function phagocytosis of the dead cells also it can secrete growth factors and regulate the fibroblast proliferation last one the eosinophils are also coming from hematopoietic stem cells but they are occasionally seen in periodontal ligament they are bilobed nucleus two lobes bright red granules are there which stain with acidic dyes like eosin so their function is again the is phagocytosis so those are the three different cells present in pdl so now we have come to the summary of the cells of pdl five types of cells synthetic cells fibroblast osteoblast cementoblast all the features of synthetic cell resorptive cells are fibroblast osteoclast and cementoclast they can be multinucleated or mononuclear cells progenitor cells which give rise to new cells they are located adjacent to blood vessels rest of melase which are inactive cells lying close to cement and defense cells which can be mast cell macrophages and eosinophils now let's check what have you learned about cells of pdl which is the predominant cell of pdl cell that resolve fibers remnants of hrs in pdl are known as bone resorbing cells are called cells that resolve cementum are called defense cells which are present in pdl so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling good luck for your exams see you in the next video on collagen on the fibers of pdl soon till then take care bye bye